Dear Genesis family, I greet you in the beautiful, loving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A Él sea la gloria hoy y por los siglos. Los invito a que vayamos a Dios en oración. En oración. Please join me in prayer. Bendito Dios y Padre Celestial, te damos gracias, Señor, por tu grande amor, por tu misericordia, por tu bondad. Te rogamos, Señor, que tu Espíritu Santo nos guíe, nos dirija al escucharte, al glorificarte, al traerte nuestras oraciones. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the beautiful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for your Spirit to be upon us today and always, but especially today as we seek you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Espero que hayan tenido una semana de Thanksgiving muy bendecida. I hope and pray that your week was a blessed one. I want to thank everyone that uh, brought some food last week for our meal. It was delicious. It was We had a beautiful time, a blessed time of Christian fellowship. Los invito en este día que escuchemos la palabra de Dios en Mateo capítulo 20, versículos 17 al 19. Today we will read and listen to the word of the Lord in Matthew chapter 20, verses 17 through 19. Escuchemos la palabra de Dios. Now Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples aside on the road and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and deliver him to the Gentiles, to mock and to scourge and to crucify. And the third day he will rise again. Mientras subía a Jerusalén, tomó a sus doce discípulos aparte y les dijo por el camino, Ahora subimos a Jerusalén, y el Hijo del Hombre será entregado a los principales sacerdotes y a los escribas. Lo condenarán a muerte, y lo entregarán a los gentiles para que se burlen de él, lo azoten y lo crucifiquen pero al tercer día resucitará. Esta es la palabra de Dios. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your precious holy word. We pray, Lord, that you will feed us with your word. We pray, Lord, that you will touch us and transform us. May your Holy Spirit work in us as we listen to your word read and proclaimed. Te rogamos, Padre Eterno, que ahora al escuchar tu palabra leída y predicada, tu santo espíritu nos transforme y nos haga un poquito más como Cristo. We pray all this in Jesus' mighty name, en el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amén. El sermón de esta mañana se titula Continuando con su misión. Continuing his mission. We have had a few days of rain and cold weather. That's not something that we are very used to here in the Rio Grande Valley. Yet, somehow, this change of weather reminds us that Christmas is coming. El mundo entero se empieza a preparar para la Navidad. Ya muchas ciudades, muchas tiendas y casas han puesto sus árboles y luces de Navidad. Many people are buying Christmas gifts and making plans to celebrate Christmas. La Navidad es un tiempo de alegría, de gozo, de celebración. Un tiempo de pasar con la familia, con la iglesia y amistades. Christmas is a time of hope for all humanity, even when many do not know or have forgotten what it is about. 
let us take some time to remember why Christmas is a time full of hope. Recordemos por qué la Navidad es tan especial. To understand Christmas, we must go back to the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve. Antes de que Dios creara a Eva, Él hizo un pacto con Adán. O sea, estableció una relación con Él en forma de un acuerdo. En este pacto, Adán representa a toda la humanidad. In this covenant relationship, which God established with Adam, He allowed Adam to eat the fruit of all the trees that God had for him, except for the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is implicit in this covenant that if Adam was to continue living in perfect obedience, he would have life. However, if he disobeyed, the punishment would be death. En este pacto queda establecido por Dios que la obediencia perfecta obtiene la vida eterna y que la desobediencia tiene como castigo la muerte. In order to understand Christmas, it is essential to understand this covenant relationship between God and Adam. When tempted by Satan, out of the freedom of their own will, Adam and Eve chose to disobey God. And since Adam represented all of humanity, in his fall, we all fell. His sin became our sin. His punishment, our punishment. Toda la humanidad ha heredado el pecado de Adán y el castigo por ese pecado. ¿Cuál es el castigo de ese pecado? La muerte. En el momento que Adán y Eva pecaron, toda la, toda la humanidad quedó condenada. Déjenme decirlo una vez más. En el momento que Adán y Eva pecaron, toda la humanidad quedó condenada. Yes, the moment that Adam and Eve sinned, all of humanity was condemned. You may ask, where are the good news here? I thought that Christmas was about hope. En verdad que estas son malas noticias para todos, pero, pero Dios dio buenas noticias a Adán y a Eva. Que son buenas noticias para todos nosotros, para mí, para ti, para toda la humanidad. God gave good news to Adam and Eve. And these are good news for all of humanity. After Adam and Eve sinned, God made a promise, which was the first announcement of the gospel. The first announcement of a Savior, the first messianic promise. In Genesis 3.15, God said, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. God is speaking to the serpent, or to Satan right now. And he says, And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Here, God is announcing that he will cause enmity between Satan, between Satan and his seed, and the woman and her seed. God will cause enmity between Satan and his seed, and the woman and her seed. The seed of the woman will bruise Satan's head, will splash Satan's head, and Satan will bruise the heel of the seed of the woman. 
Who is the woman? As we know from scriptures, especially in Isaiah, the woman here is Mary. The seed of Satan. What is the seed of Satan? The seed of Satan is death and sin. And who is the seed of the woman here? The seed of the woman is Jesus. Dios pondrá enemistad entre Satanás y la mujer, que es María. Dios pondrá enemistad entre la muerte y Cristo. Cristo aplastará la cabeza de Satanás y Satanás herirá a Cristo en el talón. This was a promise that a Savior would come. A promise that a Savior would come and defeat Satan, sin, and death, and would save his people from their sin. In this process of salvation and redemption, Satan will bruise Jesus' heel. In other words, Christ would die, as we read in the scriptures today. Christ would die. Yet, as we also read in the scriptures today, Christ was going to defeat death by rising on the third day. En el pasaje de hoy, Cristo le está diciendo a sus discípulos lo que va a suceder en Jerusalén. En pocas palabras, Génesis 3.15 se estaría cumpliendo. In Jerusalem, the promise made in Genesis 3.15 was going to be fulfilled. The hope of Christmas is that the promised Savior was born, that He came to save us from our sins, that He was born fully human and fully God. Dearly beloved, we must fully understand the consequence of sin. My loved ones, my beloved, we must fully understand the consequence of sin and the darkness of it so that we may know the wonderful hope that God gives us in Jesus Christ. Dios nos ama y provee un camino para salvarnos del pecado. Cristo, por amor a los que han de ser suyos, vino, tomó nuestro lugar y obedeció a Dios perfectamente. Al mismo tiempo, Cristo vino y pagó por nuestro pecado, muriendo en la cruz. Muriendo por nosotros, muriendo en nuestro lugar. Jesus loves you. Cristo te ama. It is because Christ came to save his people from their sin that Christmas is so special. We celebrate the birth of the Savior. Esta es la esperanza de la Navidad, que en Cristo Dios nos da la salvación de nuestros pecados, la salvación del castigo del pecado que es la muerte. This is the hope of Christmas. In Jesus Christ, God grants us salvation from sin, salvation from the punishment of sin. For God is love. And I don't tire to, of saying this again and again. God loves you. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loves you. Dios te ama. Have no doubt in your heart. God loves you. Cristo te ama. Christ explained his mission to the twelve disciples. For in the future, they were to continue his mission, proclaiming the good news of salvation from sin through faith in Jesus Christ alone by making disciples and teaching them to obey all that He has commanded them, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now, we, you and I, our church, we are to continue with Christ's mission. Now, Genesis is to continue 
with Christ's mission. The whole reason for us having a building and, and constructing a building is for us to continue Christ's mission. Así como Cristo compartió y le explicó a sus discípulos claramente su misión, de la misma manera Él nos explica claramente la misión que hemos de cumplir. Proclamar las buenas nuevas de la salvación y hacer discípulos, enseñándoles la manera en que Cristo quiere que vivamos, como Cristo nos manda a vivir. Christmas is one of the busiest and most stressful times of the year. Let us not lose focus of the reason for this celebration. Es bonito pasar tiempo con la familia. Es hermoso pasar tiempo con los hermanos y hermanas de la iglesia, con nuestras amistades. Pero no perdamos el enfoque. No quitemos los ojos de Cristo. Él es nuestra razón para celebrar. Christ is our reason to celebrate. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Amen. Recibamos la bendición, hermanos y hermanas. Let us receive God's, let us receive the blessing. Que el amor de Dios, la gracia de nuestro Señor Jesucristo, la comunión, poder, y protección de su Santo Espíritu esté contigo, con tus hijos, con tus nietos y toda tu futura generación. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion power and protection of His Holy Spirit be upon you and all your future generations, now and forever. Amen. Que Dios nos bendiga. God bless you.